Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Loop Hero. On the last part, the rogue took on the Act 3 boss for the first time and removed the curse of the rogue that's been plaguing us throughout this series and managed to get the first kill on the Act 3 boss. Mainly with incredibly high attack speed, I think we were close to 200% but just off it slightly. And we had pretty decent crit chance and crit damage. And we were actually pretty comfortable in killing him. We didn't use Warden of the Resurrects, and we decided to retreat after the battle to bring our resources back. We also built the final two buildings that were missing, so the bridge and the alchemist tent. And we built another warehouse to store more items. So we now have alchemy, which lets us transform these resources into other resources. And we also crafted a few new items and placed these in the supply uh, menu. Uh, I can't remember exactly which ones we added, so I think we had to like 10 new items and they all give us like minor effects but as we've seen throughout this playthrough little incremental improvements can go a long way. So I was a bit undecided in the last episode what I was going to do but I had a look back through our series and it's pretty much been tradition that whoever beats the act boss goes into the next act. So I think that's what we're going to do. Our rogue is going to go on an unexpected journey into Act 4. We unlocked some new cards as well, so the, the Golden Card Zero Milestone. I'm not going to try that right now, I really like the Arsenal. We might explore this. Also rivers can now go under roads, which we might play with depending on how the map spawns. So let's see what Act 4 is all about. So enemy strength is 10%, that is massive, that's a huge jump. Enemies have 3 to 4 abilities. Enemy strength growth is 4% per loop, which is the same as this. They just start off incredibly strong. And bonus resources is 120%. And there's no limit on resources. Wow, this is kind of bonkers. So unlike all the other runs, we might just die immediately. But let's see how we can uh, deal with this. So this is equivalent to enemy starting at like the end of loop 2 strength. Bring it on. I'm going So immediately at our arsenal, we don't want to place this around our camp this time because we can actually gain benefits off it. So I'm just going to place this up here, yes, yeah, it was fine. And this gives us some additional slots. And let's just equip our base weapons and go. We start with two potions, which hopefully allows us to survive this loop. Let's see what the slimes have got now. Splashing. Creatures allies get the thick slime effect after its death. Okay. Attack is get Okay, so it's a debuff to allies. That's interesting. Temporal Beacon could spawn Watchers, and you know what? Let's see what a Watch can do early on. Famous last words. We have a first Smith's Forge. So Smith's Forge is... Won't be useful right now, but we can block them with villages. The spawns, but I think we go for this right, right now. We picked up our first thicket. The thicket will go in the top corner and the meadow will go in the opposite corner for now. Three more slime fights. We're quite comfortable beating them. Wheat fields we can't do anything with right now. But would be nice to hold them to a village. So let's look at the watcher. Time flows backwards. That seems really bad. So I assume our, yeah, our time of ours going backwards. That's really cool. Another like unexplored space of game mechanic comes out in the wash. We've picked up a bookshelf. I think we will trade for some items now. So let's have... Oh, we should probably have done the river on the other side actually because there was more space, but that's not the end of the world. I say it's not the end of the world. It's very, very annoying actually. You know what? I think I'm just going to accept that thick. It was kind of a waste and I'm going to start weaving down here instead. So yeah, let's go down here instead. And let's keep placing meadows over here. So we're going to have probably a forest there and we hold the wheat field, which we'll trade. Trade unit for a beacon. Do we want more attack speed? Or just, do we want time to go faster? Yes. Interestingly, I wonder how these hit each other. Will time go faster in reverse? I bet you it does. So let's not do that. Uh, one at the start is fine. Yeah, I've got to trade that. It's not really what we're looking for earlier on. 
And we haven't seen a huge progression for us, although we don't get new loot till we go back to the start. Uh, here's a vamp vampire mansion. We could place it on the inside, actually, and I think I will. More meadows up here, and we have to hold the wheat fields. Again, more meadows, which is fine. I'll turn up these all into blue with forests, probably. And here's a river, so we're going to start at the bottom at the moment, because it's a bit tight in space up there. Keep placing meadows. I could even make a blue meadow here, but it's still a bit of a waste, so... I think for now, we just keep, like, checkerboard patterning up there. Loot Fountain number one. We don't feel obliged to equip everything, so we're not going to, because we can trade these at the Smith's Forge for defense. And I think we're going to need defense early on. This is a straight upgrade. This is going to be an upgrade. I think these are both the same, yeah. Just put it in a main slot for now, and let's keep going. So as we said, this could get very, very hard in the early game. So don't be surprised to see us die. I'm going to place another vampire match on the inside of the corner. I'm going to get first defense ups here. More thickets. More thickets is good. And I'll place it on the inside this time. Really looking for a village right now. It'd be a, a big get for us. No, nope. no, still no villages. That's fine game. We can survive. I say we can survive, I hope we can survive. <laughs> Gonna have two fa um, more vampire fights up here. Ooh, forest, do I want the forest? Not really. Okay. And another wheat field just in the worst possible time. We're really looking at a village like that was such a like silly roll for me to make. Oh, another old painting. I think they're pretty good if I remember rightly. Pop out these resources. Yeah, increases boss damage is probably always gonna be a good stat for us. Let's continue our road. Is there just one small village game? That's what we're asking for right now. An oblivion, which is pretty nice, and some more wheat fields, but no villages. I don't really know what I'm going to do with this oblivion right now. I might even use oblivion just to destroy this guy that spawns, but we'll have to see. Uh, we're going to place an outpost here and here, probably. So I think I'm happy enough to have the smithy on the corner. Yeah, yeah, sure, that's fine. As I said, there is a critical mass for this uh, character for Forges. So we're currently on two tiles, so it's two times two uh, added together. So this is going to take four off, that's going to take four off, so we've got eight slots removal. So if we do another two by two grid like this, we only need one more Smith Forge. We finally picked up a village, which is perfect, because I can now block the spawn off this one. So we don't have to worry about anything coming from here, which is excellent. Uh, I don't want to trade a lot of these cards off. I will now start to make some blooming meadows. And we're good. About to hit camp again. Which will give us, uh, hopefully, some better loot. At the moment, I've not really felt this 10% strength from the start. It might be more of a testament to how well our deck is built at the moment. Or just how good the rogue is, I suppose. Ooh, level 4 boots, a lot of evasion. We take off crit damage. I think this is fine for now. A lot of counter on it. Crit damage up or attack speed up. I think I'll take the attack speed. Then weapons. We have a 3 uh, skill spare with lots of counter. Counter's not really something I'm looking for, but I'll take it this early on. And an amulet. This has crit damage chance on it. I don't think it's worth the trade at the moment. The survivability is pretty good. Especially around this start. Honestly, we might also want to start looking at improving our watchtowers at our base. Because it increases their range of effectiveness. Aha, first outpost. And that is going to help us here. Outpost great with the rogue. 
So trading some of our items off, trading some more items off. It's a pity we can't hold this Oblivion to come round again, because we could have Oblivion the living armor. But I'm hoping to pick up a village and block the spawn again. Or block one of the spawns at least. It's not too bad to fight one early on, but I don't know what their next effect's going to be. Okay, they still spawn onto these tiles. I didn't realise. Flood, 20% chance to receive double damage. Okay. So that's two damage. Interesting that they seem to be picking up weaknesses in Act 4. So Supply, Surveyor, or Smokescreen. So, so Smokescreen is great survivability. Surveyor is pretty good survivability for our deck. It's giving us HP the more roadside tiles than we see. Or su Supply, so let's just bring in more resources back. I think I'm going to take Smokescreen. Oh yeah, I remembered now, sorry. I did misplay that. You can block the spawns with villages, I think, but you have to put the village next to the tile. Okay, that's fine. That's just a misplay, I guess. Yeah, I should have put the village here, and then Wheatfield here and here and tried to get another village. But that's... We could Oblivion up a Wheatfield at some point if we have it. In fact, you know what? I might even trade the Oblivion right now. This is kind of a weird play. But I'm going to put in a wheat field. Because I'm about to lose it anyway up here. And the river might as well start coming up now. And let's use these forests to make some gloomy meadows. Oh my god, I didn't realize the boss meter was spawning that quickly. Great Scott. Oh, we have to... Oh my word, this. Right, I found out... I found out the crutch of what is going on. Well, we might die, but this appears to be a boss ru rush mode, I'm guessing. So this is the first boss, isn't it, incursion? Okay. River isn't exactly what I'm looking for right now. I should probably have held that, actually. Yeah, I 100% should have held that. Well, this might be a short episode, folks. Uh, higher attack speed does affect us more beneficially. I did not notice, like, these marks on the bar. Must be pretty un unobservant, I'm not going to lie. Okay. I wonder what happens if we could spawn the second boss, but we're not going to find out anyway. So we have managed to uh, times eight that. Man... I can't even get a beacon of the inner place to affect the boss, which kind of hurts. So I might hold on to the tile because I could swap the beacons out. Cemetery I do feel like I have to use, but where to use it? I guess here. So he spawned even more lich palaces. I think we're about to die. Hello again. How is it possible? Shut up, we've got a score to settle. Okay, so no effect. Health and damage are increased by 5% for every Lich Palace. And he has plus 45%. Okay, this is insane. I just don't see how we don't die here. He, he's going to kill us in like 5 hits, I think. We have got lots of potions, though, to help us. So maybe, maybe... Potions might be the answer. Or we could just die. Are we going to live? I can't believe it right now. I just thought we were just going to eat the die. We have killed him. Nonsense. This is impossible for so many reasons. I don't understand. Next time I'll try something new on this punching bag. And we got his trophy. Well, I would never have said we would have beat that. I would have given us like 0.001% of a chance. But we managed to do it. And now we know we have to be very careful with the towers we put down. Uh, so this is a lot of counter. Ooh, that's just worse, really. I think I will take this for the HP. Damage to you all instead of crit damage chance. Again, I feel like I need the crit damage chance. I think this is the way we win the fights. A bit of magic damage on here is pretty good. That's got counter on it. Counter's not particularly useful for us. I think I would just take the raw damage instead. Ooh, level 6 amulet. You know what? 
I will trade the crit damage chance for that much magic HP. And I think everything else is good to trade away. Wow, that was kind of insane, to be honest with you. I think I'm going to hold this beacon. I don't think we can make the best use of it right now. I'm glad he spawned behind us too, by the way. So we have another uh, wheat field that we're not really going to use. You know what? There was a, a potential play, actually, of leaving the wheat field there because he'll scare away the uh, iron guy if we play our cards right and you know what i'll put it back because of that reason it looks stupid because i oblivioned it but i have thought now there is a potential use for it oh a lot of crit damage chance i trade off a lot of my hp for it though this is gonna look oh it's 150 hp though you know what it's not worth it right now as long as we attack fast enough, we'll get the crit chances blocking. We did get our attack speed to 37, which is pretty high for early on. I'm going to place the village there just to despawn him. Okay, that's fine. Bandit camp will deal with it. Another vampire mansion. Where do I want the vampire mansion? I could ransack one of the buildings, but it looks so like dangerous to ransack something. But if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it here. That does potentially ruin our idea though there, but I think we risk it. Let's keep placing forest down. I'm just wondering, do we place the forest down? I think we still do. And we spawn our village. That is now my new oblivion target. I think I'd rather fight bandits. I should really be watching these actually because they have an additional fix. Always attacks heroes allies first. Okay, they all seem to have like a downgrade as the fourth ability, which makes sense, I guess, for a balancing sake. Some forest, I think I will trade that out. Vampire gets a swarm attribute during its attack. I don't know what the swarm attribute does. Hmm. I guess we can look in the encyclopedia. I guess swarm means like you're less likely to be crit or less likely to be hit. That's normally what like swarming means. Now let's place some thickets down. Need to be careful because I'm coming close to spawning a boss again. Which is kind of uh, insane really. Do I think temporal beacons are worth placing? No, I'm going to trade it. A bookery is not bad. Not a bad thing to see right now. Oh my god, the Lich Palace is still there, by the way. So that's blocking us from placing tiles, which is pretty horrific. I still think I'm going to oblivion that, but... Thank god, that looks horrible down there right now. I still need to keep placing tiles to make it difficult, though. I need the loot. Temporal Beacon's probably not worth it. I think attack speed is still worth it though. So I'm going to place the forest up here to make some blooming meadows. Blooming meadow. You know what? I think I'll hold these for now. I would be happy to trade these two cards back at a bookery. Loop Fountain. Magic damage. Okay. That looks pretty good for us. Damage to wall wouldn't be bad either, but I think that's better. Boots. Level 5 booties. Evasion and evasion bonus. Yep. Sure. Less damage, that's nice. Uh, armor. I think I'd prefer the evasion bonus, so I will trade them up. And then a weapon. This is just an upgrade on our Gladius. Yeah, I think I'll trade that. Okay, that's fine. So, Bookery. Yeah, okay, these are nice cards for us, I guess. Outpost can help us in difficult tiles. Uh, the thickets can get doubled. Where would I wipe this outpost though? Somewhere right now. And oh, I'd really like it on there if I could get it, but I can't. I think I get it here, the help on here. I know I could get on another tile, but this is probably the more tricky one if he spawns down here. And then they'll get vanquished. I would also like to put it there, I'm not gonna lie. Couldn't spawn another thing, he has to come out this way. 
That's fine. I'm going to spawn another one. Let's see if you can go left and right. Left would be better. Again, this is a tricky fight. What have the ghouls got now? Slow. Every damage dealt to this creature interrupts its attack. Damage to wall then, we should put something with one damage to wall. It makes this fight free for us effectively. But things are going better than I thought they would have been. He, this is a quest guy, if you know, so he's got more HP. But we're just continuously up, interrupting his attack. It's actually insane because we have vampirism, so we're just healing off him right now. And he has not hit us yet. Cool. Minus pick. Plus one pebbles when passing the campfire tile. Okay, that's nice. Let's keep placing uh, a rivers down and thickets next to him. I might hold the blue, the meadow at the moment, which is strange. So, yep, he's wished him away. Okay, this is a really nice play from us. Ooh, a hand of oblivions. 7% less damage for every enemy. So that's not going to work for the boss fight. So that doesn't actually benefit us for the boss. So none of these really benefit us for the boss. But I could clear up the lich palaces. This is the first time I've ever taken this. Handful of oblivions, please. I wish I'd gone into planning before I did that, so we're gonna lose an oblivion, but it's fine. We don't need all of them. Please stop removing all my oblivions. Yeah, slight misplay, I suppose, but let's get rid of that, because that's gonna annoy us. Let's get rid of the bandits camp, because that's gonna annoy us. Uh, and remove the Lich Palace there, because we can do something better here. Let's remove the Lich Palace here, because we can do something better here. And, I don't know, keep clearing Lich Palaces, I think. Don't know if I really want to fight him either, but he does give us better loot. Uh, let's clear that tile. I don't think I mind to on this side of the camp. We can't really gain a benefit from any of our tiles other than the outpost, which we'd have to place here. Yeah, I think that's that that is logical. So I might hold on to Oblivion, but we are coming up to a bookery. Hmm, difficult to say. River, river. I think I'm happy to trade all these off again. I could have believed in a bookery as well, but neither are really close to uh, being done. You know what? Just remove the Lich Palace again. I don't know if these add to the other bosses, that's just like half my reasoning now. River Cemetery, bookery. Bookeries are always nice. By always, I mean sometimes. <laughs> but let's place this one down here as well. Just keep trading our cards away. We just want attack speed right now. So let's wind this round. We picked up another cemetery. Let's place that here. No cards to trade, which is fine by me. We're coming pretty close to spawning second boss. Another Oblivion card is pretty wild. Oh, in a village. Goodbye, we're not fighting you anymore, and there. His spawn is blocked again. I said, I don't mind fighting the Living Armors, but I don't want to fight multiple per loop. So the outpost, the outpost can help us with the boss. Right, this is going surprisingly well right now. So they're going to help us with the final boss. And by final, I mean the subsequent bosses. Smith's Forge. I could place it here and here, and then weak fields in between. And I think I'll try that. Seems like a, an interesting strategy, at least. Times eight bonus onto that. Nothing I want to oblivion yet. So I think I'm gonna try and hold on to it and hope that I can remove, uh, what was it called? A villages, or I think I would remove bandit camps. Do I want to place a meadow? Probably should start placing meadows again. There's more wheat fields. Wheat field go here. And I think I'm happy enough to trade beacons away right now. Loot fountain comes in. And we have a level 6 amulet. It's magic damage. Sorry, magic HP down. But it does have damage to all. And we did say we wanted to pick something up with damage to all. Just going to check our other weapons. 
So this has crit damage on it, which seems really good. Let's just trade this off for this for now. And this has crit damage on it too. Remember the rogue gains a benefit for having the same stat and everything. So let's do two crit damages and maybe we can get it on more equipment. Crit damage chance up is also very strong for us. And then it's just, do we want this? Yeah, I guess we want some damage to all. Do we want to downgrade up boots as well? We trade off a lot of evasion for attack speed. No, I think I'll keep this right now. I think we've played this pretty nicely up right now, especially when we got like suddenly surprised by how this was all going to go down. Let's start placing thickets here. This is going to have to weave back here, so I'm going to place a thicket here as well. Our attack speed right now is 95%, which is really, really good for us. I'm going to pick up some XP from here, and we completed a quest, which gave us an armor with quick damage chance on it, but no better. So goodbye, goodbye. Yeah, things are looking pretty nice right now. We have damage to all this time, so we're going to interrupt their attack, so this is a really nice battle for us. And in fact, I think I would look at changing all of these uh, villages down to ransacked ones. Sadly, we're, we're targeting the wrong enemy right now. If we hit the vampire first, this battle is just free for us. We can heal off it. But it could be going worse. We're definitely going to live through it. Nice. And this is just now free healing for us. Some more meadows. Uh, let's place these around here. And let's place one in the gap here. Very close to spawning the next boss. We just need to be a bit careful now where we do this. We probably want to complete a loop for now. I should also look at the skeletons. I don't think we've looked at their fourth ability yet. But based on everything else, it looks like it weakens them slightly. Which I guess, as I said, you have to balance it that way. Otherwise, we'd have just got wrecked, I think, fighting a boss so early. Ooh, I really want to place the thickets down there. There's a kind of village. Okay. Alright. Be careful with all the tiles we place now. So skeletons. Fills attack bar to two thirds after missing a hit. Okay, that's actually a, just a buff. So skeletons are probably more dangerous. <laughs> I guess it's just their fourth ability becomes worse. But skeletons are only picking up third ability. I'm just thinking, do we want to fight the next boss now? There's cards here I just don't want to trade away. If I can place two cards down, I want to place the river in a thicket. You know what? The river's not important right now. Can I just place a thicket? Yeah. I think I'll trade these all out. Well, it's just giving me cards I want right now. I think we complete the loop. It, it kind of hurts though. We have to be so careful. But we might level on our next loop as well. So It's just a balancing act. I wish it, in a way that it would tell us how many more tiles we can place down. Well, I'm just... I'm just so worried about uh, losing. But we've got so many rivers right now. Ah, forget it. Let's stick with our strategy. If we get Oblivion's remember, we can just play them because they reduce the like, amount. So we could place an Oblivion with something. But right now, we're just wasting these cards away. And we're losing some of our advantage against just the general mobs that we seem to have. But what? I should check what that he does as well. Yeah. The broken one. Archer, every damage dealt to this creature interrupts his attack. That's a nice effect for us with damage to all. Skeleton archers are too much of a problem close range. And we have leveled. Oh, I think this is what we take. We're not looking for supplies right now. And right, we go to spawn the boss now. Level 8, crit damage way up and damage way up. Welcome to the team. 
Uh, oh, this takes off crit chance. That has damage to all. Crit damage chance up. I think we take this. It's a lot of stats on this. But this is more HP. Yes. I think we need crit damage chance. That still has damage to all on it. Okay. Would I trade damage to all for that? Considering it. What are the boots? Crit damage up. That's just an upgrade. I think I keep damage to all just because it helps us so much against the ghoul fight. Although we don't have a ghoul fight anymore. It's not useful for the boss either. It's just so hard because the smoothie's going to change that right away. This is a bold play, but I'm going to switch it just because that has changed up. If we can ransack one, I still think we do ransack it, but let us, let's just go for it. I can't place it there because I still want to ransack it, and I've now stopped myself from being able to ransack that, which is a bit of a misplay, but not terrible. That could help us here, whatever help us there. We actually had a few tiles left to spawn the boss, but whatever. And this is the second boss. It is just a boss rush, isn't it? Another wheat field here, and now we want meadow here. Temporal beacons. Are you really useful for us? Possibly. Let's place one up here. Put some meadows around the temporal beacon. And make more blooming meadows. As I said, it'd be really interesting if we could spawn both bosses. But it feels like it'd be insanely hard to do. Right, let's go. Okay, we're looking for an oblivion to deal with that because we just don't want any uh, villages. I think it's the worst tile we can fight right now. We do have a bit of evasion, but not enough that I would count on it. Evasion's just that we've never really built up in this uh, game so far. Might be worth looking into a future, an evasion run, but. Right now, I'm happy with what we're doing. Single Scarecrow, pretty good. I think we're about some of the living armor as well. Which is fine. It went behind us, still fine. Level 7 boots, nope, Smithy can take them away. We have 29, I think 29 or 25, yeah. Oh, it's 28. I don't know. The number's quite hard to read, I think, in my opinion. Or, excuse my monitor, might be a little bit too small. <laughs> uh, shall I ransack a village? You know what? Ransack me a village, baby. It's also spawned a bandit camp, which I should have been a bit more careful of. And I think right now, I need more attack speed. I'm getting a bit concerned with how this could go down. And I might also double this. I don't think we can be as selective as you normally are waiting for thickets. What's the Scarecrow's additional effect? Oh, it has a chance of counter-attack now. So Scarecrows are a bit annoying, but we seem to deal with them pretty quickly. So we've lost damage to all, so we can't just interrupt him freely. Oh, we've picked up another village. And another vampire mansion. Are we corrupting somewhere? Yes, we are. Oh, we just failed a quest, which is fine. I'm going to corrupt. I really wish I had that damage to all now. You know what? I'm going to go past it first and then corrupt it, I think. Give me some more blooming meadows. I'm going to double these ones. A little bit more HP. Right, we passed it. We're looking damage to all now. Just one little bit of damage to all. But obviously we're not going to get it on this loop because we're the rogue. We're going to get it to the camp. Silver pendant, very nice. And continue doubling thickets for me, please. Oh, I should consider placing a thicket down over here as well now. Yeah, let's double it there. Right, that's not a problem for this loop right now. So, as I said, this is all for without damage to all. Everything's going to attack us. But we're dealing with enemies pretty quickly. We wanted the vampire first. We've got him third. I guess the odds are with us. He's going to help us interrupt attacks now. And things going pretty fine right now. That wasn't too bad. 
did lose a bit of health, but not the end of the world. A few more rivers. Just what we wanted. Another vampire mansion. Do I want to ruin any more of... I'm kind of tempted to try that, but I think that'd be really bad. But I think I know it would be really bad, so let's not do that. In fact, let's just trade the vampire mansion cards. We don't need it. So, as it so happened, damage to all would have been quite nice through this loop. But, we're hopefully putting ourselves in a better position to fight the boss right now. Skeleton's a bit annoying. And by a bit, I mean he's been a lot annoying right now. He was also a quest. Crap Skeleton, he has that Master of Battle effect. Ooh, we took a lot of damage on this fight. More than I'm really happy with. Do I want to trade some cards out? I think I'd happily trade most of these cards out now. We're about to hit a day as well. Give me a bit more HP. And I'm going to put the bookery... Here or here? I think I'm going to put it here. Trade the cards out. Cemetery's still not exactly what I was looking for. I'm a bit concerned on just doubling like, effects that are worse. Uh, the cemetery... Can we gain a benefit from placing this anywhere? So the skeletons are pretty dangerous for us right now. You know what? We can place it on the tile behind us. We're just walking through. Oh, an oblivion. That is very nice. We're not dealing with that. Admittedly, it's a bit presumptuous to assume we're going to beat this boss. So we could die here. We did have a lot of problems with the priestess before. Could you please stop? I refuse to arms. So, do they have anything else? Crate stains, grass windows instead of every second attack. Mm, doesn't look like it. HM chance to protect by a stained glass window. And summons two angels. What's the HP? 1500. Okay. We have two friends in this fight that's been having uh, damage from the mirror spot. I think we're going to die here. I don't think we're quite good enough. 271 damage we just took there. And this looks wild at the moment. Again, we get some of A time, which is quite nice. We're doing okay. Oh my god, we crit for 600 damage. And fa a failure again. Till we meet again, Zealot. I can't believe we killed it. And now we get their loot as well, which is saying we picked up another Oblivion. Goodbye, a village. You're horrible. And we're still alive. I'm literally speechless right now. I just can't believe we're still going with this run. This has damage to all on it as well, which is very nice for us. And we're going to trade that with uh, this one. Yeah, we'll trade it with the bottom one. Level 10 armor, crit damage chance. I still like that, so I'm going to still keep it. Crit damage down, but... What was our crit damage? 200%. We hit some insane crits there. If we didn't, we would have died. I'm certain of it. This is the major notebook crit damage down. I think we want the crit damage right now. Uh, ooh, no, I don't think so. I think everything else I'm happy to, to trade away. Although, plus 27% attack speed. Give me. So nothing to trade at the bookery. We now have damage to all as well, so this next fight shouldn't be too bad, as long as we target the vampire first. We wanted to kill him as soon as possible, but we're not. We keep interrupting attacks right now. Either way, we're, we're regening like 80 in a hit. They're doing not a lot to us right now. I mean, I just can't believe at the moment how well things have been going for us. It's literally unbelievable to me. You know what? Ransack it. I don't care anymore. Kind of care about that, though. <laughs> uh, another wheat field. Go here. And another Vampire Mansion. I think I'm going to trade it. I don't think we need to place any more Vampire Mansions. Uh, I wish you'd made him go away, by the way. But we're attacking fast enough that it's not a huge issue. And we have 30 of this defense buff. Okay. Yeah, fine. I'll have a thicket, thank you. I mean, look at resources as well. We're picking up a lot of resources. 
I think we have enough uh, of these orbs as well that I could save the loot if we just randomly die. Right, is this better than a Qatar? It's one less damage, a lot less critical damage, but it has damage to all on it. We've already got something with damage to all on it, so I think I'm going to hold this. Because we're just using it for an interrupt right now. Nice, more rivers. So at some point I want to see what happens if you put a river under a path. I didn't think I was going to have the chance to test that out on this run, but it's looking like we will. Beacon I think we hold on to and trade out as well. So this has a quest ghoul in it. Again, attacking the vampire early would be nice, dude. Rather than attacking the quest uh, ghoul, it's going to take ages to kill, but we're still interrupting attacks. So it's not the end of the world right now. Uh, we finally killed the vampire. He's been consumed for more survivability, but it really doesn't matter too much. Another outpost. Outposts are just good wherever we can get them. Let's try here, I think. We'll probably put something in these tiles eventually. More river, more river, more good. And I'm going to hold the beacon. Although I say I'm going to hold the beacon, is it really worth trading the beacon out? Is it really worth placing the outpost anymore as well as a consideration? It's not helping us beat the bosses. And I think this is how we kind of have to look at our run right now. Is this going to help us beat a boss? Because we're about to spawn the third boss. Outpost we can't place around the boss fight. If I could, I would. Smithy, uh, Smith's Forge doesn't help us too much. Although it would be nice having one near the boss. So you know what? I'll invest in one here to take off any loot we get from quests. These three things just don't really do it for us, I think. Although us attacking faster against the boss is pretty nice. Okay, the beacon can stay. These two just go. These do help us fight the boss. So again, I think we should place these down. Meadow. And so much... No, I was going to say, so much is my confidence, I don't think I'm going to double this. I think I will double it, actually. But I don't want to spawn the boss in this loop. But next loop, maybe. So do these cards help us beat the boss? Yes, most of them help us beat the boss. So I'm going to place a village here. It becomes ransacked, that's fine. We can deal with it. Place another roof down here. And there's no point really winding down now. So I I don't know, I kind of want to see what it does to the path, but I feel like it has to just go through like a blank path like this. So I don't know, a river might end fairly soon, is what I'm saying. Meadows, come here. Make a forest to make it blooming. Again, I'm feeling a bit com more confident right now. I said, oh my god. We were very close to spawning the boss then, actually. I don't want to do it right now. Time to hold on to the cards, I think. Our attack speed is plus 184, which is pretty good. Oh, we're attacking the vampire first. Stop the bat spawning, and now this is just free HP for us. We're going to heal back to full off this. Okay, we didn't quite got to heal. They got an attack in, strangely. I thought we'd constantly interrupt. I guess we maybe we missed an attack. I'm going to have to hold on to these, but I would like to place some of them. We do have a, a, a bookery coming up, so I'm going to lose these three cards. I'll deal with it. Just to make sure I don't spawn the boss. Right, loot fountain. 12 armor. Damage to all... But it's a big HP up for us. Counter up doesn't really benefit us. Yeah, let's take this. 12 Qatar. Crit damage chance up. That seems incredible. And I think I'm going to take this on here for now. Crit damage up. Welcome. Boots. We've not picked many good boots or an amulet actually for a while. Is this what we want? No, not really. I might just take this now. It loses a lot of attack speed, but hopefully will take less damage. And level 10 boots with attack speed, incredible critical damage. Again, I think I'm going to upgrade these now. It's not quite the stat I want. It compensates for this, but 
we could have done better there. We've passed uh, Go, or in this case, the uh, the boss tile. So I'm happy to start throwing down these tiles pretty liberally. Spawning at three's boss, presumably. Yep. It's another incursion. Uh, let's start placing down some more thickets. One here would be nice, thank you. Uh, and again, I think I start dubbing up some forests just to make sure we survive this battle. Can place a weak field here, that's nice. Smith's Forge is basically pointless to us now. The beacon is pointless too because we can't use it to affect the boss battle. We could use it to help other fights though. I guess like attack speed ups over here would be quite nice. Although I think it's just a time human speed. Yeah, attack speed for all units isn't too bad, I guess. It let's kill scarecrows maybe. Actually, no, it was pointless here because they have counter attack now. It's not pointless, but it's not great. In fact, I don't think we have great uses for the beacons anymore. I don't feel like I have to place a bookery down. If I get an oblivion, I think I might remove that one though. So I think I'll trade these out to try and get oblivions now. Two meadows. Another village. Sheesh. We have picked up a lot of villages on this uh, run. Uh, bandit camp, sure, whatever. We're not too worried about bandit camps right now. Some more meadows. Although that being said, we don't know what the fourth ability of the bandit is yet. It could wreck us. Uh, dude, I don't know. Here. Yeah. Yep, looks like nice. This is a horrible fight. I didn't realize he'd spawn here. Nice time to level as well. This is pretty nice. Lowers the quantity of items received from the camp tower by three. I think we take this to help beat the boss. Picky, I would normally pick up early on, but I don't think this is a normal run. We're not going to get another loot before the boss, and I just want something to help us kill bosses. Especially since it has multi targets, so damage to all actually is pretty good for us right now. But we seem pretty strong right now. I, would, I had no idea Act 4 was going to be like this, a boss rush. I just didn't think it would be able to be worked into a game like this. But here we are. We're still living, I guess. That's kind of horrible. I said, I'm still really interested in what will happen because there must be another boss here. Because clearly we aren't just going to win the run. Crit damage chance up. It's a lot of evasion down though. Our attack speed is 210%. This seems weird, but I think I will trade this around just to try and crit more often. It was a big attack speed down though. I can't deny. I'm hoping to pick that up though with through the thicket still. So again, damage to all should help in this fight. We shouldn't take too many hits. Oh, we're just going to take hits off the vampire. Oh, magic shield held most of the way. So we are going to get some damage to our health, but not too bad. But survivability right now looks pretty good. Uh, I'm thinking now, again, of doubling the effects of any card we get. Just getting a little bit concerned, but I don't know. Our health is good. I just want every available like thing that could help us in this final boss battle. This can't, so we're not going to place it. River can. Look, look how quickly though we're killing the enemies right now. It's insanity. Just high attack speed on the rogue is so good. Just crits like crazy. We have 7% vampirism just innately. But like, our health is just hovering pretty high right now. He revived, but that's fine because we keep stunning them, so we're just healing off them. They are just HP potions to us now, ghouls. Uh, forest, I'll double up now. And meadow. I'm still not quite ready to start doubling meadows. Nice. Magic shield protecting us from him. And again, this should just be HP for us. And that is how it's worked out. Nice. Ooh, we're about to trade the bookery over. We still haven't picked up another uh, Oblivion yet. 
So it would be quite nice potentially to not have three cards in hand when we go through there. So I'm gonna I think keep placing planning just to remove make sure I can remove the cards from my hand. So I only want to have two cards in my hand right now. So let's get rid of these two. I've paused again. Oh, beacon's kind of annoying. Uh, thickets, though, are not annoying. Thicket can go there. Do I let this tick over? Oh, it's really difficult now to make some of these decisions. Let's try that there. I think I'm going to try and stop it ticking over just for now. I'm not under too much pressure. And we can place a beacon. Well, would a beacon be useful? We're not going to get any other good use out of this tower. Let's just place a beacon here, I think. With a skeleton fight. So we stopped that bookery changing for now. But it'll almost certainly change on the next loop. We can't just keep tossing a hand away like that for cards we don't need. As I said, we have limited space on the map. Again, no problem at the moment with HP. Dealing with everything pretty good. Okay, I'm really interested to see what will happen to the river around here. I'm hoping I can do that, but I don't know if I can go through the village like that. Again, we just have to find out. If it turns out to be the river becomes wasted here, that's fine. We'll start building up this side of the map. We've got really good advantages from it, and if worst comes to worst, we can start oblivioning uh, blooming meadows. To place in thickets, but I don't think we're able to get to that case. Look, 50 odd trophies right now. Pretty good. The rogue is pretty good, not gonna lie. That's annoying, but whatever. Uh, meadows. Can we make another blooming meadow anywhere? Obvious. Sure. Let's make one here. And the Vampire Mansion, I'm just going to hold on to for now. Yeah, let's hold on to the Vampire Mansion. And this is an annoying fight. So, last river placement at least. Reeds! Spawns a fisherman every day. Uh, okay. I guess this is going next to a wasteland tile, is it? We're about to find a fisherman for the first time on Act 4. Perfect timing. Uh, do I want to try and do anything with this outpost? I'm not really sure where best to even place the outpost right now. I guess here? Yeah, sure. Use an outpost. And then trade these out. Pick one another outpost. I mean, we're pretty close to spawning the Act 4 boss as well right now. Uh, meadow. Not blooming, but we can deal with that in the future. Okay, real talk, is there an actual purpose for this? Yes, sir. I still think this is not a bad trade, just to try and kill the our villages a little bit quicker. Temporal Beacon now, I think, has run its course. And we're fighting the Act 3 boss again. Can we beat him back to back in two different acts? Well, 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 what do we have here? Woof. What a clever dog. That's right. It's a small, naive, and incredibly dumb hero who's dying to get a bullet to his skull. And this bullet has been waiting for too long already. Yeah, yeah, touche. Tell me, is it true that it's gods who destroyed this world? One very persistent preacher told me some crap a bit earlier, and I'd like to hear your version of the story. Ha! She really said something like that? Zealots have to be wrong to believe in their own fables though or they wouldn't be zealots right so you're saying that it's not true then i knew it well she's right in a way what do you think is it possible for god to die what you don't mean that it's a rhetorical question i don't know in the end it's just both possible and impossible and you can uh, sorry, and you can see the result just don't go thinking that he's dying right now together with all of his creation He's quite conscious, rational, almighty, and just, well, you know, as God should be. He just isn't the same God as he was before. 
So God is dead and not dead. How can that be? And why did he allow this cataclysm to happen if he's rational? That's a good question. Shall we discuss it properly? Oh no, sorry, we won't. I'm still here to kill you, remember? Don't mistake my manners for a desire to talk to you. What does a hunter say before a hound tears someone's throat? Or says out someone's throat? Grrr. Get him! Woof. So, has the hunter got anything else? Nope. Oh, I never noticed he never misses. Well, this guy is normally very difficult. We've only beaten him once, and now we're trying to beat him in Act 4. He is going down incredibly quickly. We've killed him, but his dogs have been known in the past to kill us. I can't believe it, we lived. How? Once could have been a coincidence, but twice? Well, everybody has their limits, you know. Shut up! I devour whole universes! Why can't I do it now? Are you connected to him? Is it his influence that won't allow me to purge you from existence? That sounds familiar. A dead sorcerer with a halo told me something like that. Hmm, I see. The old man got it right away. Well, that's expected from the old Omicron. Tell me, what is this connection? What does it mean? No one thing. You're not immortal. Death will find you. My bullet, someone else's magic or a weapon. Old age, it doesn't matter. You have a chance, but it will remain only a chance unused. Sorry, let me take a sip of water and like lose my voice a bit. We ought to learn that after this boss fight. There's no outcome in which you'll succeed. And even if there is, I must destroy you or everything will have been in vain. Everyone I've killed would not be game, but just victims of my cowardice. Then you should uh, hurry before it's too late. When all this is over, you won't be able to help your master anymore. Loot Fountain. I just can't believe it. So River, we can now place it under a road. Which makes a bridge. Does nothing. Only needed to increase the length of a river. Wow. I mean, this is incredible so far. Okay, we can't place it through village tiles. So the river ends there right now. Am I okay with that? No, but I think we'll have to be for now. I, ooh, we really need an oblivion, but we need two now because we've done the bridge here. If we get an oblivion, I can put the river through, I think, like this. So it's not completely wasted just yet, but it's getting close to being a wasted tile. Is there any spawns I should be blocking from the smithy? I can't really stop it coming there because there's a lich palace and I can't build on top of it. Let's just go to the immediate village, I think. In fact, let's put it here so I can use wheat fields too. Uh, meadows can become blooming meadows. I'll have to place that here. Temporal, I don't think any of these are worth playing. Right, let's look at our loot. So we have a 13 and a 14 amulet. So more magic HP, mild magic damage. Damage to all and crit damage chance. This is actually everything I want on my loot. 14 Dirk. So magic damage counter evasion bonus. Hmm, it's a lot of damage, but is it worth it right now? It's two more damage than the other two uh, weapons. Well, sorry, it's two more than the guitar at least. Magic damage equivalent. We get counter and evade. You know what? I don't think that's worth it. Strange as it looks uh, to me. What's this other 14? Evasion bonus. Again, it's not the stat I'm looking for right now. Yeah, I'm not too impressed with any of these weapons. So then it's boots, and my boots have been pretty poor for a while now. So, magic damage defense. Defense is pretty nice. Evasion way up. Or evasion pretty high up. Magic damage up and counter. Tough, tough decision here. Our defense is already quite low. What's our evasion? 16%. This will take it very high. You know what? I think we try this. Let's just try to evade attacks. Big risk. We've never done it before, as I said. But evasion 33, I think, is as high as we've gone. Let's carry on. So we've picked up some more rivers, which are now basically meaningless to us. Got a lot of meadows at the moment that I don't really want, but I don't want to just keep swapping them out. You know what? A cemetery here is fine. Just trying to think what I want to do with the meadows. 
Yeah, you know what? I think we keep placing meadows. I don't want all the book to change, is my slight concern now. Thickets are fine to be doubled. Forests, now I don't want to use to double. I think I just want to make it turn blooming meadows. Sorry, meadows into blooming meadows. These equipments are now going away, which is fine. And we're trading them into defense. I have to remember up here there's a book with one tile. But look at us go now. The crits are going like crazy. Just nothing stands a chance right now. I mean, I'm sure the Act 4 boss has something to say about that, but I just feel a bit untouchable right now. Uh, we have passed the bookery. So this bookery, I think, sorry, up here, is now going to change. Really looking for an Oblivion right now. Honestly, I'd be tempted to take a skill which just gave us a bunch of Oblivions again. Because we could remove tiles like this, which are really annoying for us. But thankfully, we have allies. Uh, dude, let's take another village. An outpost. Can we gain a benefit from an outpost anyway? Yes, we can still gain a benefit there. We have finally picked up an Oblivion, and you know what? Just fuck tomes. I don't want to deal with the tome. These might be more dangerous, but I've put outposts near most of them. So at least we split the damage a little bit. I will place another book room down there, though, if I get an option to. We are just mowing through enemies right now, though. It's beautiful. And I don't think we've ever taken a character into the next act and immediately fought the next boss. I think every time we came up just short. Another Oblivion, by the way, is lovely. Oh, are these both quests? Yeah, they're both quests, but it's fine because we should interrupt all their attacks. So we're just healing to full. Beacons. Alright, Oblivion. Where's the best place for the Oblivion? I mean, I'm not worried about the bandits too much. You know what? That one can go away now. I'm not interested in uh, that anymore. A forest here. Meadow and meadow. Is there somewhere for the wheat field? Yes, there is. Up here or up down here? Sure, down here is fine. Beacons. Is there a place I can place a beacon and gain a real benefit? Mm, maybe here. Yeah, you know what? Let's place a beacon here. And we'll trade these cards out. <laughs> I'm just, I'm stunned at the moment how this one's going. By the way, let's just quickly see what the bandit does. 15% damage for every ally with the same ability. Okay, that's really annoying to them. Cycle. Bandits are still very dangerous, actually. They can also take our equipment, and in fact, he, oh no, I thought he took a ring then. But we don't need to start with a ring, do we? Perhaps my oblivions were a bit too quick then. We should remove bandits as well. I don't want to deal with them. More villages. Uh, there's no real reason to put it there, no real reason not to put it there. I think I'll put one up here. Oh, we're going to see a fish person for the first time, so we're probably going to get some more text now. Double the thickets. Uh, I could have believed me in here is another consideration. At least then I can place more rivers, but I can't place anything inside the loop, I think, really. Oh no, apparently I can put a meadow. Sure. Blooming meadow inside the loop. And more meadows, 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 meadows. Meadow go here. Temporal beacon is only good with a vampire mansion. And I think that's fine. Okay. Sea dwellers, so far from their home waters. Is this one of your marches to conquer the land? I don't understand you, and the fact that I can't remember this language now that I hear it means I never knew it. But if you can understand me, help me or get out my way. So can I pass or not? What should I do? I don't want to provoke a conflict. Okay, I think he's provoking a conflict. 
Great, the uncertainty was killing me. So, Fishman. A lot of HP, pretty moderate damage, and pretty decent attack speed, so they look pretty bad. They have masses of battle that the skeletons now have, so they fill their attack by two thirds after missing a hit. 15% damage for every ally with the same ability, so bad with uh, bandits now. And Humidity Lover gets the slimy positive effect, plus 20% of aid, if there are liquid enemies in battle. First time we've seen something, I think, linked with liquid, but he hasn't got one, so we should just melt him. Well, goodbye. Where did they even come from? The ocean is very far from here, and it doesn't even exist anymore. The new world would have been better without them. But I guess it's not my place to decide who can exist and who can't. I'm trying to save the world, uh, sorry, the whole world, and not just the parts of it that I like. Again, very thought-provoking there. Make a blooming meadow. And here's a question. Do I want to spawn the boss on this loop? Let's see. So we've got a bunch of rivers that don't really benefit us. We have a tile coming up which is really annoying. We haven't spawned the boss yet. I think I'm going to hold off and spawn the boss. Okay, we're dealing with these tiles pretty nicely right now. So everything goes away. We're coming to the boss. And quest failed. Not sure why the quest just failed. But, whatever. Loop. Oh, it must have been... No, I don't know why the quest failed. Okay. Crit damage. Attack speed up. They're both something we want. Defense, evasion, pretty good. The crit chance is really what we want, though. So, I think we upgrade those boots. Yep. Boots be better. I don't really want raw stats on a weapon right now. So, I think I'm not changing any of my weapons. So I think this might just be it. We go with what we have now. We've passed the tile, so I think we can just start placing things. And we're now in the situation that I haven't got anywhere I can place the thicket without an oblivion. So I think I'm just going to place the thicket. Bookery, we can trade cards. Hmm. I guess we should place the bookery. We spawned the boss and it's an incursion and it's a rectangle and some epic boss music has started uh, let's have an outpost to help us with this fight as I said it's so unlikely now that we oh that's kind of annoying it's so unlikely as I said to get enough oblivion to do anything I've got five cards to trade out now so we shouldn't pop this we have a temporal beacon as well that we can place somewhere but we need a vampire mansion adjacent to it, so this isn't a bad place for us. So let's go there. All trades. Three cards. We'll trade the three rivers. Single bandit. Not too bad. Please don't take our items. Oh, they traded too quickly for me to do anything about it. <laughs> uh, another forest. Oh, an oblivion. Nice. Right, where are the bandits? We have one here. One up here. We can't risk them taking their items, so Bandit just be gone. We do have one on that tile. I might oblivion the tile as well, if I get enough. But I don't think I will. I think we're going to fill the map up, to be completely honest with you. But we'll start trading our items away. I would hate to lose just because the Bandit steals our items. It's not happened to us on this run. It has happened on a past run where we've had something taken, but... We are able to replace items very easily on other characters. We can't on the road. So bandits are very bad versus the road. That's also horrible over there, by the way. I do acknowledge that there's many horrible tiles right now on this map. Meadows and thickets. Oops. Thicket, go there. Meadow, come... Anyway, here's fine. Temporal beacon, I don't think we place. Just mashing through enemies right now. I mean, as I said, everything looks good for us. It's just we need to survive. That's the only thing that looks kind of like bad for us. 
<laughs> and by survive, I just mean we need to keep our equipment. So there's a bandit here and there could be a bandit there. That's all we have to worry about, I think, right now. Also, I'm a bit scared about these. I really would love the skill to fill a hand. We're quite close to leveling, actually, but I don't think we will do. Please just kill him quickly. Thank God that's one thing down, but a day's going to take over and I think another one will spawn. If it doesn't, then I'm very happy with the result. A bunch of wheat fields. Can we even place wheat fields practically anymore? No, we can't. We lost that bookstore, which is fine. Blooming Meadow. Second time fighting the sea creature is no issue for us. So, okay, so we have no bandits now. So our new num numero uno bad enemy is him. So, Oblivion would be lovely game. I don't know who the boss is, so I have no idea what our chances. We have might have 0% chance, but I feel like we're pretty strong right now. Our attack speed is plus 239%, which I think is the highest, but attack speed doesn't benefit against him. Is he going to hit us? Yeah, we've taken damage now. Evades, which is pretty good. He was horrible. Day ticked over, which isn't too bad. This fight as well isn't going to be nice. We're going to take a lot of damage, I think. Oh, just unlucky with where he spawned. A village, which is nice. An outpost, which we can't really do anything with. I think this is as good as we're going to get now. I can't remove that tile. I can't place a bookery anywhere that helps us either. Sorry, just place the tiles down. Might as well place them for the sake of placing them. I don't think I'm getting resources anyway. And these are wasted now. Oh, we... No, there wasn't a bookery. Okay. We have, like, a lot of HP. Probably, like, 75% of it. We have four potions. Let's see who the final boss is. I can't believe it. Are you really God? The one that created everything? Yes, and no. Once upon a time, my transformation started here. Hear me out. Wait, you want to explain everything before you kill me? Exterminate! It's not the same, although for a consciousness and personality created by it, there's not much of a difference, I guess. I don't want to just explain, but to be explained. There's no actual sense in it, but maybe you'll help me understand something that I can't. I will listen closely. I was Alpha, the beginning and creator of all. I created everything because I was a god of creation. And life, in all of its variety and re relativity, I liked it. Uh, I liked the most. And you, humans, were my favourites among all living beings. I've adopted the form of a human and manifested myself to humans in countless worlds to look at my creation to feel joy from it. But it was here in the heart of a world filled with different creatures, teeming with a life and struggle, where I was met not only, sorry, not as a creator, but as a threat. A man covered his family from my light, as if it was searing flame. He had a spear in his hands, and he tried to kill me. The spear didn't do me any harm, but it's still just the atoms I created scattered and reorganized. The matter I created poses me no threat. It travels throughout, uh, sorry, through space and hits not my body, but emptiness, but that impulse. I was more surprised than ever before. I was puzzled. The magnificence of that moment, the defiance of your creator, the will to live and to keep living. A small triumph of life completely independent of me, so pure and self-sustained going against the will of its creator. Only a small moment of this excitement, and I let the spear pierce my chest. I died, and I didn't die. At the center of all creation, a new me was born, new and eternal. I was striving not to create, but to return everything to nothingness as it was before. A desire born from the denial of my old intention. Pointless creation was replaced with pointless destruction. You allowed yourself to be killed, but why? I think it was out of compassion. 
I wish to give my killer what he desired. But why won't you show compassion now? What's the point of complete emptiness of not existence? Leave at least some of it to us, to the survivors. You were created, so you won't be able to understand. Why does existence and being have sorry and being have any meaning for you? Why is emptiness not perfect for you? I'm obsessed with the idea of reducing everything to nothing. The absence of existence seems absolutely right to me. It's ideal. I can't agree with you. Your servants couldn't destroy this place. That means that I have a chance. Even this is all that's left to protect. You're not him, although you are closer to him than anyone else. That's why you are still here. You are the closest relative of the man who was holding that spear all those ages ago. You're just a tiny part of the memory of my birth. A display of sentimentality that I've acquired along with a human form. A deeply personal little piece of world that I, I want to destroy with my own hands. Knowingly or not, I guarded you against my own disciples. That's how you survived. I'm actually interested in what may become of all this. Be brave. I will give you a chance to defend your world because that would be right. I shall protect the right of this world to live. Look at me and you'll see no doubt in my heart. Okay, we're fighting Omega. He has a lot of HP, 4,562. He hits for 218 damage every half second. He's cosmic and has a soul. It just says, I am destroys, sorry, I am. Destroys all cards and items in the start of the battle. Every third attack erases one item and one of the hero's stats from existence. Excuse me? Destroys all cards and items at the start of battle. So I guess it is what's equipped and the cards at the bottom. So every third attack erases one item and one of the hero's stats from existence. This seems really bad. It seems as if we should have more equipment slots, but let's give it a go. You never know. Uh, there go all my items. Uh, there goes my weapon. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy to have the guards helping me in this battle against God. Okay, you're erasing one item at a time. Uh, what's going on? <laughs> I think he's erasing things and then giving them back. Please just don't take my attack speed. We might do it. We keep critting. Please don't take attack speed and crit chance. It's so close. We have a revive as well, remember? Can we defeat God or Omega? It's neck and neck. We're both so low. We're both so low. Okay, we get one revive. I think we've done it. Oh my word. Did we do it? It finally happened. I wasn't wrong. I didn't un overestimate your importance for my existence and for my death. I'm afraid that you actually were wrong and you did overestimate it. Okay, nice of you to come out here finally. What? Hello again, boy. Let me introduce myself once more. My name is Yota and I am probably a probability itself. I am the goddess of all the unimportant events that tie together to allow the universe to continue spinning. A rustle of a branch causing an avalanche. A small rock that starts an earthquake. And now also a goddess of dramatic entrances, I guess. Yota, I don't know you. I didn't create you in any of my incarnations. Probabilities, chances, where did you come from? I've always existed, just as you've, you yourself have. Like many others that we still don't know anything about. The world is ridiculously big. I like the creation of your last incarnation. I didn't want it to disappear completely, but I can't confront you head on. So what's the probability that something capable of defeating you exists in this world? How tiny is that chance? Doesn't matter. I've decided the probability still exists. And here he is, a small man made from flesh, blood, and a bit of luck. More than a bit of luck, I think. And some play of circumstances standing before you. You've been helping me all this time, so this battle and its result were inevitable. I've helped you no more than you've helped me. I'm a goddess of probability, not an inevitability. Don't underestimate the importance of this moment. 
There exists an un uh, sorry an uncountable number of probabilities where you have been defeated, where you've died on your looped path, or were killed by one of his disciples, or just decided to give up and face the end of the world. All of these probabilities and realities are still doomed to happen. Okay, I wouldn't pretend that I understand all of it. I need some time to digest all this. Yeah, you and me both, brother. But Omega, Alpha is here now. Can you restore everything, return it to what it was? Yes, I can, but I won't. I shall create the world anew. It would take millennia. At the centre of the new world, I will be dying and be born again. And only then. I'm sorry. Your victory stopped me, but it didn't change my intentions. You did well, but the world is going to remain empty. And it's going to be like this for a very long time. No, do not apologise. I wasn't hoping that it would be this easy. And if I'm not, sorry, and I'm not going to wait till everything goes back to how it was. Maybe it will take you thousands of years to come back here. But I promise you that when you do, you'll find a new magnificent world built by humans. And if not, if humans aren't able to do it, then we shouldn't have existed in the first place. So be it, human. Someday we shall meet again and remember this moment. It won't be you, though, but your descendant, who is as close to you as nobody else. He will recognise me. Remember our talk. I would still be grateful for your assistance and I would be glad to offer you mine. Nothing has changed. There is still a lot of work that could be done only by our combined effort. I can guide you to the probabilities where you are tr uh, already dead. You can save them. You are countless, of course. Too many for your lifetime to last long enough to save them. But I, for myself, think that such tasks are much more interesting to solve. You can return to the new home. Sorry, you can return to your new home. I'm not asking for an answer right away. This world owes everything to you now. But don't forget that you owe it to everything too. Farewell. Oh my words, I can't believe it. A back to back, the B to B. We defeat the Act 3 boss and an Act 4 boss in the next episode. A first time in Act 4 too. With the Rogue no less. He was so cursed earlier on in Act 1 and 2. Like practically tossed away and discarded. But he is trained every day. Rocky montage. He's going up like steps that don't exist in his mind. And has finally made it to this moment. Just, just look at the rewards for now. I'm definitely going to like retreat off this battle. Here is a 6 minute chance to reflect a range shot into a random enemy. Okay. 4 percent chance not to spend a healing potion upon usage. Or 25% chance that enemies will have one ability less. Don't affect the bosses. That seems kind of bad actually for Act 4 because the 4th stat seems to be pretty bad. But I think I'm just going to take the resource assortment and go back home and see what happens. We also get some equipment. And here's the credits. Man, I've loved this game. The, like, the, uh... The team at four quarters have done, like, an incredible job. I've loved every minute of playing this game. It's taken some, like, horrific moments from me. So close victory to, like, snaps from us recently. But it's all been worth the wait for this. I'm just going to let the credits roll. Uh, everyone that's been, like, following me through this journey. And it's been my first journey into, like, creative content on YouTube. Thanks for being there. I hope, like, you've enjoyed, like, the thrills and spills, too, with me. Uh, but yeah, I just, I can't believe it. This game is so good. There's still things we didn't even learn. So I don't think this is the end of this series. I did talk a few episodes back in a, uh, a super chill episode of what would I do when we like completed the game, so to say. And I'm hoping it gives me an option to keep looping. I would like to take uh, the Act 3 boss and beat him by the Warrior Necromancer. And then go into Act 4 with both the Warrior Necromancer and beat Act 4 as well. I would like to try and find as many simmages as I can and as many enemies as I can. We even found a new enemy in that last part which we've never seen before, like the sea creature. I, as I said, I just want to see as much as this the game can offer. We might start taking out some insane cards as well. Like we see swamps on this credit tile which I think I've only taken out twice. I just never got a use for, but I think like stuff like Swamp River maybe does something. We'll try and find it out. Try and discover some new possibilities, but we're definitely coming into like the closing chapters, I think, of the Loop Hero series. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what next is going to replace it. Again, we talked in the Super Chill episode uh, a few parts ago, which was recorded yesterday. 
that I'm looking at stuff like One Step From Eden maybe, to just fill a small gap. And at the end of the month I'm looking at playing uh, The Binding of Isaac Repentance, and possibly Monster Train. I also have another series at the moment that I've been recording that I can't put online at the moment because of an embargo, so look forward to that in the future. I still plan on creating content, I'm not just going to stop after Loop Hero, I've been really enjoying it. It's been a very different experience for me, and I'm so happy that the first video I've put on this channel is Loop Hero. It has lived up to the expectations I had of it when I saw some early demos like a month or so ago. I just saw it and like immediately added it to my wish list. I knew I would love it, and I really have. Not sure if there's any planned DLC for this game, but if there is, I'll definitely come back to it again in uh, a later time to look at that. I could also see mods being added to this game, and again, I'm not against modding this when the the modding community is there for it. Just to see like new tiles, new environments, new effects. I think it's very unique in its uh, game type. I, I mean, I'd rate this 10 out of 10. Everything about it, I've loved. If you like pixel games, if you like like roguelike games and deck builders, this game will be your game of the year. Well, yeah, I mean, thanks uh, everyone for joining me on this adventure. I, I just shell shocked at the moment. I never thought we could have beat the Act 4 bosses, but like, when I just suddenly noticed there was a boss rush and summoned a boss like four tiles away, I thought it was over then. But the rogue, he has just surprised us continually. And what I would say is the river plus thicket and forest is a really good combo. It's incredible for the rogue. I think outposts are great for the rogue. I've definitely improved my playstyle with him. And I'm, I'm just pleased that everything we put together like came out in the loop. I mean, like blocking spawns of the living armors, I think was useful from like the mid game on. It did feel very much like we were just trying to build to a point where we could beat like each boss. We beat the boss and then we used their loop basically to just, like beat the next one. We can live by the skin of a teeth multiple times in this fight, not just including the last battle. But we did it. Man, I, I love this. As I said, I'm just hoping this plays out. I don't know if you just retreat to skip. Thank you for playing. Maybe this is the end. I wanted to give the full team like their just rewards for this. Don't know if anyone will see my playthrough of it from the dev team, but it's like by some coincidences it does go out there. Thank you for making this game. I've loved it. I think the credit's done, so I think we need to retreat now. Let's see if there's any post game. The head is uh, sorry, the hero is back. The coin I tossed landed on the right side. How do I get the credit or do you? It doesn't matter. A chain of coincidences has no meaning if even a single link is missing. Tell me. Why were you really pretending to be human all this time? Was it really necessary? Yes, I needed to focus my influence on this small area, on one little man. When I change appearance, I don't simply put on a mask to pretend that I'm someone else. Got to think on different levels and different planes than everyone else. Everything seems primitive, unimportant, weak. I'm nearly dying of boredom trying to keep this conversation going. In a land of blind and deaf men, you must deprive yourself of sight and hearing to understand the locals, right? That's how I did it. And that's how I can believe in you. In humans, that's how I can show compassion and help. I think that's what's important to Alpha. Being a human made him compassionate, and he let himself be killed. Being a human made Omega sentimental, and you see what happened. I feel that this is the uh, time to make a very important conclusion, so... Nope, I have nothing. I just don't know what to say. You really think I should try to beat Omega in other chances? Who knows? I myself don't. But if you would like to try, you won't have to ask me twice. Well, we're definitely going to try that. I just want to see an alchemy. We're still missing an ingredient. I thought we might get it for beating the game, but clearly there's something else we're missing right now. But yeah, I just can't believe like how this playthrough has gone so far. It's incredible. We've picked up loads of resources. Uh, can we upgrade something before we leave? No, nope, we're still missing a lot of rock. So despite the fact we saved this uh, one instance of reality, we still need some rocks. Anything else to say on the expedition? No? Okay, I think next time I said we're going to come back to Act 3, strangely. And we'll do Warrior or Necromancer. Maybe Necromancer because we haven't really shown him off too much. 
Uh, in terms of supply, we haven't really picked anything up. Let's just go back to the encyclopedia quickly to see what we're missing. So brick was what we were missing on roads, fair enough. We really didn't explore this too much either. We put one bridge town tail down and it just said it did nothing. Only it needed to increase the length of the river, which is nice, I suppose. But maybe bridge then links with something else like bridge and swamp or the bridge and reeds. We've picked up reeds now, it does nothing. Only needs to increase the length of a river. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, sorry, I've not clicked it. It spawns on a fisherman every three days. Yep, so we saw fisherman for the first time. Still missing two tails uh, down here in the in, sorry in the landscape. Lich Palace, Storm Temple. We've got all these. We're missing one golden card, but it's just because we haven't played it. We actually have the card. So this is all of them. So maybe we'll do some runs with zero milestone next rather than Arsenal in Act 3, just to make things a bit more uh, interesting. Uh, just trying to like think of what else we need to build. Or, or upgrade, really. What was gymnasium upgrade? More slots? Unlocks the town cards. So we want... Can we pick up 10 metals this part? I think... I know we get, like, a loss on alchemy. But if we can make 10 metals, so we need 500 hydrogens. And we don't know what this does yet. Hmm... I'm just trying to think of what will give us a good exchange. Uh, let's decompose a few of these. And then I think I'm going to decompose a few of these as well to get to 500. Oh, went a little bit over, but that's fine. And then we're going to synthesize some metals. Nice. So we have 20 metals now. So Gymnasium gives us the town... Oh, we need one more. <sighs> Back to Alchemy. Clearly I meant to uh, do this. There we go. And the Gymnasium. Let's see what the town card is. Upgrade. Ah, a real temple of knowledge. The best temple of all. Gain new knowledge. Cramming and exercising. Oh, excising. Your memory. Well, your muscle memory at least. I feel very sorry for the study of geography, though. Now you can learn the whole discipline in just a few hours. I get what you mean, this is all geography in the world. But still, microcosms of geography would be pretty prevalent in something like this. Like, just look at all like creatures you'd get by a river. Anyway, I'm just rambling now. <laughs> so we have suburbs. Can only be placed next to other suburbs if they are present. Increases the experience gained from killing enemies by one. Okay, that looks pretty cool. And interestingly, this is an environment tile. So this is one of the environments we're missing. I have no idea what this links with. Maybe suburbs and desert can give something. Suburbs and meadow, maybe? I don't know, but let's... Can only place next to other suburbs if they are present? Strange. I don't know how we get the first suburb though. Maybe you have to build a village first and then you can build a village next to a suburb. But we'll put that in our decks. We'll do some exploring in Act 3 next with the Necromancer. Let's just try and find some synergies out. Anyway, I think I'm going to cut it there. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this playthrough. I hope you can continue to enjoy it as well as we try to finish the game with the other two memories. And let me know in the comment section if there's anything else you would want to see on this channel. I will look into the comments, as I said, every so often. And again, thanks for watching, and I'm going to see you next time. Man, I can't believe this. What an episode. Goodbye.